The DC animated universe was full of superheroes and supervillains with outrageous skill sets through the use of technology, magic, mutations, or simply just being an alien. But none of them possessed quite as powerful a set of powers as Jean Jones the Martian Manhunter. Well, okay, he was actually only called that one time on these shows. In fact, as a kid, I always found it too similar a name to, well, the Manhunters, who appeared as early as Justice League's second episode arc. The name also sort of implies an antagonistic nature, while the Jean Jones of the DCAU, in any case, was one of the more sympathetic and emotionally charged characters of the JL and JLU cartoons, if not the entire animated universe. But just because he's usually a big green teddy bear doesn't mean he can't pretty much kick anyone's ass that he wants to at any time ever. The dude is ridiculous, but it's high time we track down just how ridiculous. In the mainstream DC Comics, the Martian Manhunter has had an almost incomprehensible power set. Everything from shape-shifting, to flight, to super strength, to... Mayavana? But in the DC Animated Universe, much like was the case with Superman, the creative team decided to tone down Johnny Boy's over-the-topness in order for pretty much any villain to ever pose a threat to the Justice League as a group, or the Martian by himself. During a Justice League panel at the 2001 San Diego Comic Con, Oh my, how I wish I could time travel to that. Bruce Timm was questioned about this aspect of Jean Jones and responded, The tricky part about Jean was trying to limit his powers because in the entire history of DC Comics, he's had every power imaginable. We said, okay, which ones do we want to give him? And the thing is that at times, he's been presented as being like at Superman level strength. Plus he's telepathic and he does all this different stuff. So basically the powers that we settled on, he does have telepathic abilities and he is still a shapeshifter, but we're trying not to overdo that because it's like, size of an elephant, and he passes through things. He can alter his density so he can move through walls and stuff. And he's strong, but he's not quite as strong as Superman. He's not nearly in that class. And he does fly, um, to which series writer Rich Fogel butted in with no Martian vision. Martian vision? What's Martian vision? Oh, heat vision. That one never made sense because he's afraid of fire, so he has no heat vision. We never really call him the Martian Manhunter either. We just call him Jean. You know, except that one time. But the superpowers Bruce Tim mentions here are just the tip of the iceberg, really. It might be somewhat tedious, but I suppose the only real way to be sure we catalog everything is to go through every episode of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited that he's in and jot it all down. So let's do that. Beginning in the series debut, Secret Origins, we meet Jon Jones for the first time, imprisoned in a military base and rescued by Superman and Batman. And how'd those two happen to happen upon him? Mind stuff! <laughs> Despite his restraints blocking most of his powers, Jean was able to get out a few garbled, horrific-looking mental images to Superman's head remotely. Seriously, pause on some of these frames. They're really disturbing. What is that? Oh my god. Ugh! So, telepathy? Check. And as soon as he's freed from his bonds, he transforms his physical appearance into something much more familiar and approachable to his fellow underpants on the outside amigos. Shape-shifting? Check. That's all we get in the first episode, until part two of Secret Origins, which starts off with these three dudes fighting off a few alien invaders. Again, not the Imperium. This guy is the Imperium, and this guy is Miss Martian. During the fight, Jean does this rather intrusive thing where he, like, swoops through Batman's body, which he really does not seem to enjoy, and blocks an incoming laser blast. So we can add phasing to the list, or density shifting, or intangibility, or whatever you want to call it. Let's call it swooping. But to block said laser blast, Jean initiates some kind of coolio blue aura around himself. It doesn't work because that one laser blast just knocks him out immediately, but it's literally the only time in the entire DCAU that we ever see him do this. What is this? I'm trying to track down a comic book counterpart to this superpower, and other than just being semi-invulnerable to physical attacks like Superman, I'm coming up short. Maybe it was a power they thought they'd use, maybe it's just a visual they were trying out, like how Flash's eyes glow white when we first see him use his speed to bring Batman his bat wing wing. Yep, that's a thing. Either way, I guess we can add weird blue force field thing to the list. Once the gang all finally comes together, right now, over me, Jean swoops out of the Batwing and joins the fight via the power of flight. Checkeroony! He continues to employ the use of his flight and fate uh, swooping throughout this fight. During the rest of the episode arc, we don't see any other new powers, just lots of the same, except that blue thing. 
I don't know what that is. Though technically, when Jean tells the other heroes the origin of the alien invaders, he uses the term shape-changing. They even absorbed our shape-changing abilities. So canonically, it's not shape-shifting, but shape-changing. Add that to the list. N no, no, not the list of superpowers, the list of things that will make James angry. It's a long list. His next appearance is in the next episode in Blackest Night, in which Green Lantern Jon Stewart is brought to space court for blowing up a planet he didn't blow up. Oops, spoilers. Hashtag keep a Juris for a secret. We get a lot more of the same here too, but there are a small few things I feel the need to point out. The first, Jean apparently needs a spacesuit to breathe in space. You know, actually, no. That phrase has been bothering me for a while now. No one breathes in space. There's nothing to breathe. It's whether or not the character requires breathing in the first place that makes them able to survive in space. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead a teeny bit, but Jean demonstrates the ability to <coughs> survive underwater in the episode after this, The Enemy Below. Bolivac's physiology is very similar to my own. Really? Are you sure? Big old pig here does not seem like he can swoop through water or do a blue thing. Wait, can John even do a blue thing? Sorry, back to In Blackest Night. So he can't breathe in space. This seems illogical based on his originating on a planet with about 0.1 oxygen atmosphere. But I'm not a scientist, and neither are you. Probably? If you're a scientist, leave your thoughts in the comments below. But another weakness we get a glimpse of in this episode is fire. When a big flaming car is headed for Jean, he seems genuinely frightened. Look at how fast this dude turns around. That's like four frames at roughly 25 frames a second? That's like, uh, uh, ooh, doing some mad quick maths here. 0.16 seconds? Can we add super speed to this man's power list or what, people? But seriously, Bruce Tim specifically said he's afraid of fire. We don't see too many instances of this in the animated universe, but God himself said it pretty matter-of-factly there, and in Tim we trust. Unless, of course, he's, like, blatantly wrong about something. So I guess we gotta start a weaknesses list here, too, and we'll add oxygen depletion to that list as well? Funny how fire needs oxygen in order to burn. But I'm not a scientist. Another thing I'll point out from this episode is Jean's ability to track the mind of Green Lantern from halfway across the galaxy. He can even feel the guy's emotions. This is sort of an extension of his telepathy, I suppose, but going off this same DC fandom list I've been referencing, credit where credit is due, this could be considered thought sensing, in which Jean can use the mental signature of a being to track it and can detect life forms by their empathic as well as telepathic signatures. So does that make Jean an empath as well as a telepath? Uh, like that Jean Grey actress chick in Star Trek The Next Generation, no James, bad James, back to Justice League. I mean, both their names are Jean. Wait, if my favorite Martian can sense Green Lantern light years upon light years away, how he can't find the question on Earth? How does he not just find every person ever? Oh yeah. Writing. One last thing from In Blackest Night is this moment when Jean grabs a guy, does his glowy eye stuff, and then that guy is a vegetable. Now Jean knows what the League needs to do next, but that's like a big no-no on Miss Martian's part in Young Justice Season 2. I know, I know, different universe, different rules, different everything, but geez. Again, I could chalk this up to telepathy, but using that as an overarching term to describe things Jean Jones uses his brain for seems unfair. Let's call telepathy when he talks to other people with his mind or reads other people's minds. This, however, seems more like it would fall under a subcategory of telepathic assault, in which he can use his telepathic abilities in an offensive manner to cause mental shutdown in a target using his psionic powers. So let's reword telepathy into psychic communication and add on thought sensing and telepathic assault as separate powers. Rounds out the list a bit, gets more specific, and I wanna. Who's gonna stop me? You? <laughs> You're nothing but a scientist. In the enemy below, after we see Jean be all swoopy in the water, he and his teammates get captured by fish people and placed in this big basin thing, which slowly fills with water. Their powers are seemingly deactivated somehow by these headbands so Jean can phase, which leads him to actually almost drowning, which just emphasizes that the dude does need oxygen to survive for some reason. Paradise Lost, on the other hand, also emphasizes his weakness to fire when this big snaky boy blasts him with a whole bunch of the stuff. I'm sure this moment was there on purpose as a Martians don't like fire kind of thing, but fire sucks in general, so who knows? I'd say pretty much everybody on the Justice League is weak against fire. There's never really a scene in which someone brings out fire against Jon in a dramatic fashion a la Superman and Kryptonite, but why does everyone have to have a cookie cutter Pokemon weakness? These guys don't have, like, opposing super people 
types. Though, if he was a Pokemon, would John be a grass type? Because he's weak against fire and he's green? Or maybe a psychic type because he's psychic? Or no, he quite possibly is this rock at the start of the series. He's definitely a rock type. Check out our Justice League Poke Rap. Click here now. This is also the first time we really see Jean use super strength when he uppercuts the snake monster into oblivion. Or is it into Skyrim? These are the jokes. We could kind of guess that Jean was super strong before, but this confirms it. I mean, can I throttle a big snake that hard? Ooh, I'm gonna walk away from that one. In the episode War World, something in the atmosphere is sapping my strength. But we never learn what that something is. If we did, maybe we could tack on another weakness to the list, but we can't. Man, this episode sucks. I'm sorry, I've never liked it. It's boring, it's contrived, it's stale. You're the biggest disappointment of all. Except Crodar the Terrible. Crodar the Terrible is Bay. The next time we learn anything about Jean's ridiculousness is in the episode Fury, during which he, as well as every other male member of the team, <laughs> Male member. Damn it, James, stop. Falls victim to Eresia's anti man gas, whatever that's comprised of. Jean also demonstrates a decent scientific knowledge in this episode, working on finding a cure for the virus, but I'm not gonna count stuff like that nature versus nurture. We're focusing on his physiology here. Superpowers are a part of that. Being a scientist is not. Being a scientist, in fact is as lame as it comes. I would like to take this moment to formally apologize to any and all scientists that may be watching today's video. Science is a remarkable tool, and we should respect, empower, and support those in that community with everything we've got. If only they weren't such dweebs. And now, back to cataloging a fictional superhero's different types of punches. In Legends, after the League is inadvertently transported to an alternate universe, John attempts a telepathic outreach only to be hit with psychic backfire put in place by the episode's main villain. So I guess psychic attacks is some kind of weakness of Jean's? More so perhaps than other members of the team anyway. He may be more vulnerable to intrusive telepathy because of how open his mind already is. So, much like Hawkman's Justice League member status, I'll count this one as a .5. I just realized I skipped Injustice for All back there because I was going off air date order of episodes and Injustice for All didn't come out until this point far after Fury, an episode in which the Injustice gang has already existed and references being led by Lex Luthor in the past. That still bothers bothers me to this day. I guess they were trying to time the episode's debut with a video game that did pretty badly. Just... <sighs> anyway, in Injustice for All, Jean manages to swoop his way into the room Batman's being held in, and oops, he gets de swoopified by this electric staff thing. He really doesn't seem to like it, and while electricity, to me, falls into the same category as fire in terms of, ow, this thing hurts just about anybody, let's add it to the list, since apparently it can also disrupt Jean's density powers, something no one else ever seems to exploit their funeral. A Night of Shadows is really where Jean's power set picks up some speed. By contrast to War World, this is one of my favorite episodes of the series, and near the end, we get this badass little scuffle between Jean and Etrigan the Demon. During their fight, Jean is determined to protect the Philosopher's Stone and overpower Etrigan at all costs, so he winds up showing off several new powers we've never seen him use before. He turns into a gaseous form, he turns into a stone, he turns invisible? I've never been able to tell if this shot is showing him swoop through a wall from a face on POV, or if he was already standing there, invisible, and then revealed himself. I've watched this clip so many times, and I'm not talking about just now editing this video, I'm talking about when I was 11 and recorded it on VHS and painstakingly rewound and paused over and over, and still, nothing conclusive! I probably recorded over Pokemon for that! Was it worth it? Yeah, it was. Now go watch our Poke Rap like I told you to before. Now these could be considered shape changing as well, but we'll get back to why I don't think that's the case here pretty soon. So the list keeps expanding. It's starting to look like Jean's not so depowered after all, and we're not even past the first season yet. Oof, look at the time on this video, I'm so sorry. Metamorphosis is an episode with a man who can change himself into multiple shapes, sizes, densities, and states of matter. <laughs> but enough about Martian Manhunter for a second. <laughs> it's mostly about Metamorpho. Here's another instance where fire bad, though, and the Savage Time shows us more electricity bad. And we're finally to the second season. Nothing much in Twilight, except- Oh my god, he used the blue thing again! I completely forgot about this! It's literally the only time in the entire DCAU that we ever see him do this. Blue thing is a real power confirmed. I guess it's just some sort of laser defense mechanism? Or just energy attacks? Or attacks in general? 
general, why does he not use this all the time? I mean, I guess it doesn't work very well is why. The two episodes in which he uses that power were written by the same person. Jean goes through some cool character arc stuff in Tabula Rasa, but no real new information. Something to chew on though, Amazo takes everyone's powers, and it's shown he takes their weaknesses too when Batman fights back with Kryptonite. So does that mean Amazo is weak against fire as well, after taking Jean's powers? Or weak against electricity, or lack of oxygen, or whatever the hell existed on War World? God, I hate War World. Now we come to Only a Dream, the Doctor Destiny episode. Another one of my favorites, and another one where Jean shows off a new superpower. Do I sense a pattern here? It could be because he's inside of Doctor Destiny's dream world, or more specifically inside Flash's, but he appears to be able to grow to skyscraper height at will to match the might of definitely not Skeletor. This could also be lumped in with shape changing because he's changing his shape, but I'm not so sure. Bruce Tim axed the size of an elephant thing. Let's just move on and see if that ability ever comes back. Spoiler alert, it will. Like, right now, the next episode. In Maid of Honor, Jean does this cool twisty swirly thing. Look, I personally would normally categorize shape changing as times when Jean morphs his appearance to match other people or animals, like a new costume or a dude in a brown coat or a dragon, but I guess it can be extended to include change of size? Man, Jean's powers are really hard to categorize. The dude can pretty much do anything, and we've proven that by this point. DC fandom labels the broad term shape-shifting alongside malleability, plasticity, and elongation. But you know what? I'm not putting numbers on these. This ain't no Easter egg video. <laughs> Screw it. Plasticity's going up there, if only because I like it the best out of those three options. This will cover big boy kaiju power and stringy snake power. Fun fact, this clip was actually used in Toonami's original promo for Justice League Unlimited the only clip used that wasn't from JLU. But it's understandable why he wouldn't actually do this in JLU. We don't need three stretchy guys. In Hearts and Minds, Jean kind of fuses with the flame of Pytar. His psychic connection to the energy being takes hold of his physical form, causing him to mimic its appearance and gain a temporary third eye. This seems to be like a combo platter of telepathy and shape changing, but could also be categorized as possession, where Jean actually becomes one with another being. But this is the only time we see him do this, and I'm actually pretty Pretty positive about that this time, and he seems to be only partially in control, letting the Pytar do most of the work. So while it's cool, it's probably nothing categorically new. Now I know the Justice Lord Jean is a different person from a different universe, or timeline, or whatever, but he does use the blue thing while fighting Doomsday in the episode of Better World, though this version seems to be for more offensive purposes than defensive, like it's his Super Saiyan mode or something. This episode was not written by Rich Fogel, which means that somewhere, Bruce Bruce Tim probably scribbled Jean's list of powers on a napkin and included blue thing and everybody else went, what's that? And he's like, yeah. Doomsday also sparks a fire to take out Lord Jean, but is he just guessing? We know he was brainwashed into how to take down Superman, but maybe Cadmus also planted in, hey, one time the green alien guy looked real fast at a flaming car, so maybe use that to your advantage. Also see, I told you, nobody likes electricity. In the terror beyond, he, wait, is Jean not in this one? Finally, he's been an every single episode arc so far. I can take a break! And he really doesn't do anything new for quite a while after this. I mean, look at the list we've got already. This is way too many things. In Secret Society, he does show he can mimic Clayface's clay-like, sloppy, shape-shifting stuff, shape-changing, sorry. But that just looks cool. It isn't like being a swirly swirl or a smoky puff or growing all tall and stuff. It's just stuff. This is all just stuff. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I said before he might not actually be able to change his size, but then he goes back and pulls a, I can grow into it in the Christmas episode. This is pointless. Shocked by electricity several times in Starcrossed, and he just conjures up a camera? Where the hell did this come from? And he doesn't do a single damn thing for most of Justice League Unlimited. Okay, what? The dude gets ripped in half by the Annihilator. That's some straight up bullshit. And then he just kind of mushes himself back together? Is this shape changing? Stop redefining shape changing! Look, understanding the superpowers of the Martian Manhunter sounded easier than it wound up being. But this list we've got here seems pretty close, I guess. Sure, sometimes his shape changing has to stay the same color as he is, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes a little zap keeps him from doing anything at all, and sometimes he can overpower Brainiac's Bolt of Bonanza. Sometimes he blew things, and other times he don't blew thing. I don't know. But here's what I do know. 
Scientists suck. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you like what you saw today and want to see more stuff like it every week, be sure to hit subscribe, and then the bell will have little things by it, and that means you're always getting notifications. If you click it again, it means you only get some of them, so don't click it again. Don't click the bell, actually. Just, just click subscribe, and it'll just do it on, oh God. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, there are many ways to do so. You can become a member of our Patreon family by visiting the link in the description below. We've got all sorts of cool rewards in return for your benevolence, like early access to our videos, voting privileges for future videos, or even your name read out loud, like in the case of Robert Sterling and Dark Poet 1792. Thank you both so, so, so much. You should also check out our merch store, also linked in the description. We've got a Keep Epilogue a Secret shirt, a Legacies of the DCAU shirt, and lots Lots more. Just go look. We really appreciate any support you're able to throw our way. We don't make a ton of cash off this here YouTube thing, and while we do make these videos primarily because we want to, a little something something always helps keep us going. Stay tuned for more of me going crazy over tiny details, like usual, and lots of other DCAU stuff from the Watch Tower Database. <laughs>